Let's start with this chocolate example. I'm Angie and I'm going to make this as easy as possible, starting with defining our variables. Those variables are the amounts. So when I'm deciding what my variables are going to be, I'm thinking about what am I mixing together. And in this case, I am mixing a 10% fat. So I'm going to call that X. So X is equal to the 10% fat chocolate. I'm just going to abbreviate. And then I'm going to let Y be the 60% fat chocolate. Okay, so I've got those two. And that means that I'm now ready for my equations. Every single time with these mixture problems, you're going to come up with two equations. The first one are the amounts. So I already have my X and Y. So I know that if I take the amount of the 10% chocolate plus the amount of 60% chocolate, I'm going to mix those together and I'm going to come up with 200 milligrams total. That's the amount. So this is equal to 200 milligrams. So this is my amount equation. I also want to come up with an equation where I'm multiplying the percent times the amount. So in this case, I've got 10% fat. So that's going to be percent, 10% or 0 0.10 times the amount. This is X. That 10% of or times X represents the fat content. So this percent times amount is now specifically my fat content. Okay, so 0.10X plus Y was 60%. So 0.60Y is equal to, we want 50%, but I need another amount times that percentage. So it's going to be 0 0.50 times its amount, which I get from the equation above. So I'm going to write times, I'm going to use parentheses, times 200. So there's my percent times amount for each of these. Now I'm ready to solve. So let's go ahead and work and solve this system of equations. A great way to solve is using substitution. So I'm just going to move this up out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and grab this first equation. When I'm doing substitution, I want to solve for one variable and get everything else on the other side. See my video in the description down below to learn more about this technique. It's a really good one. So I'm going to take that equation just because X and Y are so simple already. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for X. So I'm going to subtract a Y from each side. You could also solve for Y if you want. Wanted, and I get X is equal to 200 minus Y. So now I've got this expression for X from my first equation, and I'm going to plug that right into my second equation. So here's what that second equation looks like. It's 0 0.10 times X plus 0 0.60 Y, that's supposed to be a six, is equal to 0 0.5 or 50 times 200. Now I can go ahead and take that value that I have right up above there where X should be and replace it with my 200 minus Y. 200 minus Y if I can squeeze it in there. So now I'm feeling good because I can start working through the math. I've got some simplifying to do. I'm going to distribute that 0 0.10 and I'm also going to simplify the right hand side and multiply 0 0.5 times 200. As I do that simplifying, I end up with 0 0.10 times 200. You can put this right into your calculator. That's a 20. And then 0 0.10 times y. I'm just going to write that as 0 0.10y plus nothing to do with that 0 0.60y. On the other side, 0 0.5 times 200 is 100. So I get 100 there. Now I definitely want Y's on one side and I want my numbers on the other side. So let's go ahead and bring that 20 to the other side. I'm gonna subtract it, minus 20, minus 20. So that's gonna give me on the left, negative 0.1y plus 0.6y. I'm just going to take that negative 0.1 and add it to 0.6. That's going to give me 0.5y. On the other side, I get 100 minus 20, which is equal to 80. 
I just need to divide by that 0.5 to solve for y. Divide by 0.5 and y is equal to 160. This is an amount, remember, and if I go back up to my original question, it's the amount in milligrams are our units. So y, I've got 160 milligrams. Y was my 60% fat content chocolate. So as I'm thinking about those steps, there is one more step. I have an answer, but did I actually answer the question? And the question is how much of each do they need? I only right now have answered how much of Y, which is the 60% chocolate that they need. So I've got Y, but I can go right back up to my equation and solve for X. Let me go ahead and bring that equation for X down. If I scroll up here, you can see what it is. Let me put it in yellow. It is this guy here. It's a little bit messy, but you can use any of the equations that have an X in it up to this point. Let me bring that one down. So I've got X is equal to 200 minus Y, but I know that Y is equal to 160. You can probably do this in your head even, and I get X is 200 minus 160, and X is equal to 40. So is our amount 40 milligrams of the 10% chocolate. So we really have two pieces to our answer. We've got the Y and the X, 160 and 40. In this one, we've got some nuts that we're mixing. And the nuts this time, instead of having a percent content, instead they have a value, 660 per pound, or that would be times pound. One pound would be 660. Two pounds would be double that, which would be what, 13, 20, and so on. And then the Brazil nuts are 440 a pound. We're gonna mix those together and come up with a mixture that is 574, so a dollar amount in the middle. And we're gonna come up with 28 pounds. Even though this one has dollars instead of percentages, I'm still gonna end up doing it the same way. Here come my steps. I wanna start by defining those variables and remember that those variables are amounts. This time I have cashews. So instead of X and Y, let's use C for cashews. These are my amounts. So C is equal to the amount of cashews. And these are in pounds. So this is in pounds. P O U N D. I could have abbreviated that too. And then we've got Brazil nuts. So I'm going to use a lowercase b for Brazil nuts. And this is going to be Brazil. Again, this is my quantity in pounds. I also want those equations, including that first one, which is the total amount. So C, the cashews, plus the Brazil nuts are going to add up to a total amount of 28 pounds. So 28 is that total that we get. The next equation would have been percent times amount, but in this case, I've got dollar amounts. So it's gonna be the dollar amount times each of those quantities. So as I put this together, the cashew nuts are 660 a pound. So 660 times the number of pounds that we have. So it's gonna be $6.60 times, and I'm just gonna write my C right next to it, but that means times the number of pounds of cashews plus it's going to be dollar times amount, so 440 times the amount of Brazil nuts that we have, which is B, is equal to, I need another dollar times amount. That's going to be 574 times 28. Okay, so I've got my equation. I've got my system of equations, and I'm ready to solve this by substitution. I'm going to, get, again, start with that simpler equation, and let's solve for one of our variables. I can subtract a B from both sides. If I do that, I can just put it up here. I end up with C is equal to 28 minus B. So now I've got this quantity that is the same value as C. So I can put that into my other equation where I've got that C. Go ahead and move this up so we've got some room and let's start doing some math. So I've got 660 times C plus 440B is equal to, 
I've got my calculator over here on the side. I'm just gonna do 5.74 times 28, and you should get 160.72, 160.72. And that 28, 28 minus B, goes right there inside the parentheses. Now I can distribute, so 660 times that 28, and I need my calculator again. So I'm gonna do 660 times 28 for that first distribution. So if you're following along with me, you're gonna get 184.8, and then 660 times the B, nothing to do there. I'm gonna write the negative sign 660B plus four, 40B is equal to 160.72. There's a lot of decimals going on, but you'll notice that I really have a nice equation. I have B terms and I've got numbers. So I wanna get my B terms on one side, let's get them here, and then my numbers on the other. That means I wanna subtract the 184.8 minus 184.8. Okay, thank goodness for calculators. So I'm gonna do this 160. 0.72 minus 184.8, and that gives me on the other side there, so equals negative 24.08. These cancel, and then I've got negative 660 plus 440. So negative 6.6 plus 4.4 in my calculator, and I get negative 2.2 in front of that B, negative 2.2 B. Moving this up, I'm almost there. I just want B by itself. I need to divide both sides by that negative 2.2 negative 2.2. Okay, so I want that negative 24.08 divided by negative 2.2, and I get 10.945. So B is approximately, I'm gonna do 10.945. So we could round that up just depending on how they wanted it rounded. I can say approximately 10.9, remember these are pounds. Pounds. So I found B, but if I go back to my instructions, I need to answer the question. And the question says how much of each type. So I know that I need 10.9 pounds of those Brazil nuts, but I also need to figure out how many pounds of cashews. If I go back up to my original equation with the C and the B in it, C plus B is equal to 28 pounds. So C plus 10.9 is equal to 28. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 10.9 from both sides minus 10.9, 28 minus 10.9, and we get C, and we've also approximated, so I'll use that little approximate sign, is 17.1 pounds. So I've got 17.1 pounds of the cashews, and of the Brazil nuts, we've got 10.9 pounds. Now we haven't yet done one with interest. Here comes our interest example. In this one, Marie has inherited $60,000, wouldn't that be super nice, and invested part of it at 10% and the rest at 8%. Now, honestly, the first question you should ask is why not invest all of it at 10%? Sure, she has a good reason, but after one year, she's got $5,600 in interest, not too bad. How much did she invest at each rate? This one is for you. I want you to follow the steps that we used. It's gonna be most similar to that chocolate question with the percentage fat. So I want you to work through this one. I'll give you one little clue though. We already have the percent times the amount for the other side of the second equation, that $5,600. So set this one up, get as far as you can, and then rejoin us and see how you did. Okay, so let's set this one up. First of all, we need some variables. So I'm gonna let X equal, remember these are always amounts. So this is gonna be um, the dollars invested at 10%. And then we'll let Y be the dollars invested at 8%. And I know if I add up all of the money that was invested, X plus Y is $60,000. Super nice. 
Next, we need that percent times amount, starting with the 10%. So that 10% or 0 0.10 is times X. That's gonna give me the interest in the X um, account. And then I've got 8%. 8% 8 is 0 0.08 times Y is equal to, it would be percent times amount that computes interest, but they already gave me the interest. So I just need the $5,600 on the other side. It's the only thing that's tricky about these interest problems. But here we are, I've got my system of equations. I definitely wanna use substitution, starting with that simplest equation. I'm gonna take that simplest equation, subtract a y from both sides, making my life a little easier there. And I get x is equal to 60,000 minus y. Now I can go ahead and put this value that represents x into my other equation where x lives. Let me move this up out of the way and let's do that. So I've got 0 0.10 times x, which is 60,000 minus y plus 0 0.08y is equal to 56 now I'm ready to simplify. Let's multiply that 0.1 into that first set of parentheses. 0.1 times 60,000, you can definitely do this on your calculator, you're gonna get 6,000. Minus 0 0.10 times y, 0 0.10y plus 0.08y is equal to 5,600. I wanna get my variables on one side and my numbers on the other. So let's move that 6,000 over. Subtract the 6,000. Okay, so it's looking good because I'm gonna end up with just my y terms. So these y terms, as I combine the negative 0 0.10 and the 0 0.08, I get negative 0.02y is equal to 5,600 minus 6,000. Their difference is 400 and I need a negative sign in front. So negative 400, almost there. Divide both sides by negative 0 0.02. Negative 0 0.02, and I'm not gonna do that in my head. So I'm gonna go ahead and take 400, negative 400 divided by negative 0 0.02 and I end up with $20,000. That sounds like a good answer, doesn't it? So Y is equal to $20,000. My Y account was that 8% at 8%. I also need the amount invested at 10% interest. Well, remember that we had 60,000 total. So that means that X has gotta be 40,000 and that's gonna be 40,000 at 10%. I'll bet you're doing great. Even if you were able to follow along with part of it, that's exactly where I want you to be. Next up, we're gonna be taking a look at some exponents and polynomials. You got this.